Hey guys, Ride, your Chief Espresso Officer here, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about a question I get asked all the time, why is my coffee bitter? So I have already answered this question in another video, why is my coffee burnt, bitter or sour? But today I'm gonna go into a deep dive and really figure out all the most common reasons why you might be experiencing a bitter coffee at your home or at your cafe. So if you like my content, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell and sign up for YouTube. And if you wanna learn more about how to become a better barista, whether you're at home or professional, jump onto my website, ultimatebaristacourse.com and sign up there. We've got a whole range of different modules and lessons that you can learn about all areas. Anyway, let's get into why is my coffee bitter? Okay, now it's important to understand what bitterness is and what you're experiencing is actually bitter because bitter won't just come on its own. Your coffee won't just be one dimensional, it's bitter. It might be a little bit bitter, a bit sour, a bit salty. There might be muddiness. There's a whole different range of flavors that you're gonna have in any one cup. So let's first look at what bitter means versus sour or acidic, salty, actually all of those other ones. So bitter, when we talk about bitterness, we are talking about a specific one from the Specialty Coffee Association, quinine acid. So it's an acid that you can't actually buy anymore. It's illegal to get it unless it's prescribed, but you might find it in things like tonic water. However, tonic water has a lot of sugar to balance out that flavor, but Bitterness is that really sharp attacking, usually found on the back of your tongue, but it could be anywhere on your tongue. We're not talking about uh, sourness, which might make it make that sort of face, suck in your cheeks a bit. Bitterness we are talking about is a sharp, stingy, stabbing sensation. Sort of like when you eat that really dark chocolate you know, that 90% chocolate, that's just that really bitter flavor there. So as I mentioned, you will experience bitterness mostly on the back of your tongue, because that's the most sensitive area going towards the front of your tongue is the least sensitive. But there's about 2,000 to 8,000 different receptors in your mouth. The majority of them are on your tongue. So bitterness being one of the most easily discernible flavors is gonna be the first thing you notice now, all coffee is slightly bitter. That's just something that you're gonna to have to get used to if you've never drunk coffee before. You're not gonna be able to drink a short black and just be able to down it very easily. You're going to have to adjust your palate because bitterness is a part of coffee. Caffeine is extremely bitter on its own, but coffee, in the forms that we drink it, with the milk or even just as a straight espresso, is not just caffeine. It's a very tiny amount of caffeine, which adds to that bitterness, but overall, you're gonna get thousands of different complex chemical compounds and sugars, acids, beautiful, desirable flavors are also gonna be amongst them. So just understanding where you might receive that flavor on the back of your tongue most of the time is where the bitterness is going to be. So let's talk about all the reasons that can cause too much bitterness in your cup. So the first thing you need to understand about why your coffee might be bitter is understanding your product. And what I mean by your product is, of course, your coffee beans. Now, if you look closely here, you'll see that on this side, on the right side, is a darker roast. And on the left side is a lighter roast, or do I call a medium light roast? And this is what I would call a medium dark roast. Of course, you can get darker coffee, darker roasts, and there are different types of coffee. So understanding what coffee you have in your machine is really important to understanding why your coffee might be tasting so bitter. Firstly, if you're using a Robusta bean, now there's two main varieties of coffee, two big broad families. Robusta, which is what we've grown for hundreds of years and has been the main up until about 30 years ago, the main variety or main species of coffee that we grew. It is twice the amount of caffeine as Arabica, which is now a more modern, sweeter, softer, more nuanced coffee variety. It has twice the caffeine amount of that, and it also has twice the bitterness. Because the quality is less than the Arabica variety, 
There are some ways to get around it that most roasters do, which is roasting it darker. And just like a steak or any sort of other meal, when you roast it darker, you're gonna lose a lot of those sweet natural flavors that you'll get. And so your coffee might taste bitter just from having a Robusta or even an Arabica that's dark roasted. Okay, so we've talked about the difference between Robusta and Arabica, Robusta being that double the caffeine amount, so twice as bitter than the Arabica. Now, I wanna to talk to you a bit more about the quality of coffee. So these two coffees here are actually both Arabica. On your left here, and I'm not gonna mention the roaster who did this on the left, but this is not coffee that I would consider high quality. For instance, it's been dark, more darkly roasted, which we already talked about, can taste more bitter and burnt. If I look at the quality of the beans, they're all different shapes and sizes. They're all, some of them are cracked, like this one here, you can see that is completely cracked open, busted, probably wasn't even a full bean to begin with. There's spots all over them, they're called Quakers, there's insect damage. Just overall, this is a low quality bean. Even smelling it smells like a duck pond. As opposed to these, which are more uniform, and there aren't spots on there, there's no insect damage, there's no cracked open half beans in there. The quality of this coffee is what we call specialty coffee. And this is above 80 on the scale out of zero to 100. This is not specialty coffee. In fact, this is a cheaper quality coffee. You get a selection of different bean types, different sizes. There's allowances in there for the defects and the insect damage and the cracked and Quaker beans. So you are going to experience very different flavors from this coffee to this one and one of these flavors you will get is that bitterness. So look at your product. Does it look more like these beans here or does it look nice and even, uniform, without spots, without broken, without chipped beans? Because if your coffee looks like this, guaranteed that's one of your reasons why your coffee tastes bitter. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the quality because it's important and I think that's probably 90% of the problem that you might be experiencing. If you get it from a supermarket, just don't. Get it from a local roaster, go online. General rule of thumb is the more expensive the coffee, the better quality the coffee is. That's just a general rule. So if you're buying coffee at $20 a kilo, it cannot possibly be high enough quality to give you what you want because coffee beans can cost anywhere from 35 cents a kilo right up to $500 thousand dollars a kilo and they are not all the same quality so you jump online to a local roaster in your area and the more expensive coffee is going to be better for you stay away from supermarkets there's also a thing called strictly high growing coffee shg or shb sometimes it starts stands for strictly hard bean and that's coffee that's growing at a higher altitude and for those of you who don't understand about the elevation and how important that is the higher the coffee is growing, the slower it develops, which allows a lot more of those complex sugars to develop in the cherry flesh, and that goes into the bean itself. And so then you'll have a sweeter, more nuanced flavor of coffee in your strictly high grown or strictly hard bean coffee beans. Because Robusta has double the amount of caffeine, it doesn't always mean that you're gonna have the caffeine content is gonna be the bitter flavors. Sometimes, in fact, 60% of the sugars in Arabica coffee are not present in a Robusta coffee. And that is probably causing a lot of that bitterness as well because there's no sugars naturally occurring in the coffee variety to give you that sweetness in the mouth. Okay, so the next most important factor to eliminate bitterness is time. And it's something that even the most skilled baristas overlook and they don't understand how time can cause bitterness in your coffee. So what do I mean by time? Well, what happens first when you run water through coffee grinds is that all of the nice desirable acids and desirable sugars dissolve first. And the longer that the coffee is exposed to the hot water, the more it's 
extracting all of the different oils out of the coffee grinds until the point that it's no longer dissolving any sugars and natural nice occurring acids. It's now going into those quinine acids that I've talked about before, which are quite bitter. And so what you're actually doing is over extracting your coffee and that will definitely cause a bitter taste in your mouth. So a general rule of thumb is if you're making espresso coffee, you want the pour to start out slowly, not drip, but also not gush through, nice and evenly, and it shouldn't run for longer than about 30 seconds. If your shot's running 40, 50, 100 seconds, you're extracting way too much coffee out of your grind, and that's gonna cause bitterness. Now, on the other end of the scale, if you're only doing 16 seconds or 20 seconds on your extraction, it's actually gonna cause sourness because there aren't enough of those sweet sugars which sort of fall in the middle of the extraction in your cup. And there's another point on extraction that I wanna cover, that if you do have dark roasted coffee beans and you just can't get hold of some medium, nice, great quality Arabica coffee, there is a trick you can do which is called a ristretto. And then a ristretto is basically shortening the shot, it means restricted. So rather than running your shot for the full 30 seconds, you might wanna slow it down so that it still runs about 22 seconds and just cut it there. And that doesn't allow so much of those late bitter flavors to come through. But that's only really if you've got dark roasted beans or you want that more intense shot. It's not ideal to have dark roasted coffee, but if you just can't get any other coffee where you live, then try that trick and you might just get rid of some of that bitterness. There's another term that I could go into and it could be a whole nother video, and it would go on for hours, and that's called TDS. TDS stands for Total Dissolved Solids, and what that means is each coffee granule has a maximum amount of dissolvable solids in there that can go through into liquid form. You can't just keep extracting the same grind forever and expect to keep getting good quality coffee. At some point, it'll just use up everything and water will run through. A TDS, now to get a refractometer that measures this, it costs you about $800. That's not something that every home barista can do. Now, that's going round, down a really deep rabbit hole that we don't have time for now, but that's something to understand about is you can't keep extracting nice, good quality coffee until it's dead. So there you have it. There's at least five different ways that you can work on if you're experiencing bitterness in your coffee, whether it be at home or at work. And if you like what you've heard here today, subscribe, hit the bell, sign up and support us to make more videos like this for you wherever you are around the world. I'm Ryde, your Chief Espresso Officer. Enjoy your brew.